So, we, as uh, you might already know, we presented our demography toolbox, and uh, this initiative is the answer to the call that the Commission has received in June this year from the European Council. They ask us to present a toolbox to address demographic challenge and notably its impact on Europe's competitive edge. Our focus was on making sure that demographic change does not become an obstacle to European Union's global competitive edge. So the starting point for us is why demographic change would even matter in that context. Why would demography become an obstacle to economic growth and European competitiveness? And here are the reasons why. Plummeting birth rates, rapid aging, shrinking work, uh, working and age population, parents struggling to reconcile work and family, labor and skill shortages reaching record levels, huge pressure on public budgets that may reduce the fiscal space available for investments in other policy priorities, and uh, such as green, digital transition, brain drain, depopulation, territorial disparities, seriously undermining social cohesion, and in the end, the trust in democratic institutions and processes in Europe. As all of us know, each member state is dealing with, with its own challenges. For example, the Netherlands, housing and population density are a key challenge, while in some regions of Spain it is population decline. In Italy, the key challenge is declining birth rates and an aging population. Greece is the member state with the fastest aging population. Croatia struggles with brain drain of younger persons. The ambition of this toolbox is to see how we can turn these challenges to our advantage, and there is a clear sense of urgency to act. So I'd like to clarify one point from the outset. When we mention migration in the context of the demographic impact on competitiveness, there are two key elements to bear in mind. First, we are talking about legal managed migration. This has to be very clear. Secondly, migration is one of several tools or options that we have at our disposal. It is certainly not the only one, and this also must be very clear. But just uh, uh, to say a few words on, uh, on migration. Last year, we had more than 3 million people who, who moved in Europe legally. At the same time, we have 300,000 people who moved in Europe illegally, just to have the, the idea of legal and illegal migration. So uh, why is this called toolbox, you can ask me? It is not a strategy, it is not a policy, it is literally a set of tools. Tools that member states can pick and choose from to best complement their own national strategies and measures. Because they know the best how to use this. So it is a helping hand to member states. You know that demographic change has a profound impact on every, everyday lives and requires comprehensive and integrated solutions. Longer lives create new opportunities and usher in a shift from an aging society to a longevity society. So we, what we would like also to achieve with this uh, toolbox and uh, uh, with this uh, is that we would like to change our narrative from aging continent, Europe being aging continent, to Europe of longevity. And this is something which we find much more positive. So our society's increased longevity brings about a number of opportunities. Continued personal development, renewed intergenerational cooperation, knowledge transfer, and the benefits of a silver economy. Aging populations and longevity compel us to adapt our policies to longevity and building longevity literacy from the day we are born. It is not only the population size that counts, but rather what we do with our population, how we best build and harness this human capital. It's about human capital. We therefore approached uh, this demographic change in an innovative manner. The communication sets out a comprehensive approach to demographic change stru structured around four pillars. First pillar is parents in order to better reconcile family aspirations and paid work. Second pillar is younger generation, how to thrive, how to develop their skills, how to facilitate their access to the labor market and to affordable housing. 
Also, we are not talking only about young children, but uh, young people, but also about children. Third pillar is older generations. Uh, how to sustain their welfare through reforms combined with appropriate labor market and work, uh, workplace policies. And the fourth pillar is migration or migrants, where necessary addressing labor shortages through managed legal migration, as I already said, 3.7 million regular migrants last year and 330,000 uh, migrants, irregular migrants last year. Each of these pillars should be read through the economic competitiveness and human capital lens at any age. So we believe that the longevity society we have created is a remarkable societal achievement which results from broad-based uh, social and economic progress over, over the past decades. In a longevity society, all the persons are not that old anymore. They are mature, but not, not frail. And this is good news for all of us. This means that we need to switch from an aging economy to being longevity ready and as such keep our competitive edge. This means that we do not only invest in skills, training and education at a younger age and primarily before we reach 30 years. We may need to up and reskill again at age of 50 uh, to adapt to the realities of evolving society and economy. So we are talking about lifelong learning. It also creates business opportunities, notably in the care sector and the so-called civil economy. Therefore, policy makers and stakeholders at all levels need to create an environment across European Union that enables people to realize their life choices and to reconcile family and professional lives. So this toolbox uh, builds on best practices from across the Union and complements national level action. The demography toolbox can help mobilize policies and instruments at European level and national levels. And there is a question how to implement uh, this plan, how to implement these actions. The Commission calls on Member States to put in place and implement integrated policies addressing demographic change and mainstream demographic concerns through all policies. Fundamental rights, gender equality, non-discrimination and intergenerational fairness must be at the heart of policy choices. The chosen policy also contributes to gender equality and equality opportunities for all, notably by enhancing women's effective access to the labor market and enabling people in Europe to make their personal aspirations and choices a reality. For example, by providing available, affordable and quality childcare, women do not need to choose between a family and a professional life. They should be able to reconcile both. Member States' policies to address demographic change should be grounded in the local realities. So there is no one-size-fits-all. They, they know their situation best. We also look at digital technologies that can boost Europe's competitive edge and help offset the impact of demographic change. To sum up, our consolidated human capital, strengthened and harnessed across all generations, will eventually determine our global, common, uh, our global economic competitiveness. And this toolbox will strengthen this human capital and help make our societies and our economies longevity proof for present and future generations. Now I'm ready to reply to your questions. Thank you very much, Vice President. Um, we will open the floor to um, questions either here in the room or from the platform. Jorge. Hello, Vice President Jorge Liboreiro, Euronews. You speak about migration as an indispensable tool to help uh, Europe sustain its competitiveness over the longer term. But we see at the same time that, you know, there's an increase in hostile environment towards migration across Europe. Far-right parties are making gains in many member states. So how can you reconcile both things, the need to really sustain migration in order to, you know, uh, have a able way working force in this uh, hostile environment that it's been spread all throughout Europe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First, uh, I have to re repeat once again. I didn't say that this is indispensable, the only one. There are four pillars. The fourth pillar is migration. And uh, it is true uh, that without 
legal migration, we wouldn't be able to fill in labor market in Europe, throughout Europe. And this is the reason why we have this as our fourth pillar. Of course, there is a hostile environment in some member states, but we, uh, when we talk about illegal migrations. We are talking about legal and we think that uh, people from third, third countries can help a lot uh, to, for European uh, labor, uh, labor market. So it's uh, about uh, different situation in different member states. You know that we are 27 democracies, so it's a different situation. This is the reason why we say that there is no one size fits all. Each and every member state will decide on its own. We offer them a toolbox of different choices so they, they can choose and they can pick what they find uh, uh, relevant for the member state. Thank you very much, Vice President. Yes, you are, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. You're an accredited journalist here in Brussels? Yeah, yeah go ahead. That's not part of Croatian television. Hold on. We need to wait until it's red. We've lost the mic. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. If you don't mind, Eric, I would like to put my question on Croatian since I've seen that there is a translation. Evo, vi zapravo predstavljate ovu strategiju na, u zadnjoj godini rada ove komisije. Koji su zapravo sljedeći koraci? Što očekujete da će se dalje i planirate dalje događati? Hoće li se to dalje razvijati na vijećima, ići prema parlamentu? Hvala vam lijepo, gospođa Paro. Da, mi smo svjesni da smo u pred, možda u zadnjoj godini našeg mandata i ne želimo nikakve administrativni ili financijski teret državama članicama. No, obzirom da je ovo bio poziv Evropskog vijeća, odnosno lidera, da po temom konkurentnost odlučili smo izaći sa ovim toolboxom i sljedeći koraci su da će vijeće za opće poslove, takozvani GAK 24. listopada raspravljati o ovoj temi. Nakon što oni rasprave, točka ide na dnevni red vijeća krajem listopada i očekuju se zaključci na zadnje vijeću pod španjolskim presjedanjem krajem prosin, ili sredinom prosinca. To su sljedeći koraci. Naravno da svaka od ovih mjera ima sljedeće korake. One su možda nešto nježnije, obzirom da smo u zadnjoj godini mandata, ali u svakom slučaju nije kratko, demografija nije kratkoročna politika i stoga uh, očekujemo da će pojedine zemlje članice uh, uzeti nešto iz ovog našeg toolboxa i prilagoditi to situaciji u njihovim državama, u njihovim zemljama. Thank you very much. Are there other questions for the Vice President today? That is not the case, so this brings us to the end of the college readout. Thank you very much for your attention and participation.